Welcome to this week's episode of Timberwolves Weekly. We're your hosts. I'm Olivia Grahowski. And I'm Jessica McNeil. Timberwolves Weekly starts now. And they need some really big rings. We need some really big rings. I got a really big team, man. What a time. The men's tennis team dropped two contests over the weekend, first falling to Ferris State and second falling to Grand Valley State. This now puts them 7-6 and six overall and 3-2 and two in the GLIAC. On Saturday afternoon, the men's tennis team dropped a 7-2 contest to the Ferris State Bulldogs. Northwood's duo of Sebastian Iguaz and Austin Woody picked up an 8-6 win at the number one slot. Then on Sunday afternoon, the men's tennis team dropped a 6-3 contest to Grand Valley State University. The Timberwolves dropped a pair of close matches in doubles, which were 8-6 at the number two position and then 9-7 in the number three slot. Northwood was much better in singles, winning straight set matches at the top three positions in the lineup. But the Lakers, who only needed two wins in the six singles matches to claim the overall victory, won at the bottom three flights. The matches at the number five and number six positions each went the full three sets. The track and field teams traveled to multiple meets on Saturday. Northwood was represented at the Jim Cole Scotty Open and the Jim Duncan Invitational. At the Jim Cole Scotty Open, the women's team finished in 6th place with 32 points. On the men's side, Northwood finished 5th with 44 points. Madison Arnolds won the 400 meter hurdles with a personal best and second best time in school history, while Drew Finley finished 3rd. Winning the shot put in finishing 6th in the hammer throw was Carly De Almeida. Will Monch ran a 9 minute and 57.85 seconds in the steeplechase to finish 2nd. Ben Quayla and Ajil Prekai also finished 2nd. Quayla in the javelin and Prekai earned the second best mark in school history in shot put. John King ran the 400 meter dash to finish 2nd. At the Jim Duncan Invitational, Paul Evans won the hammer throw and discus throw with an NCAA provisional qualifying mark. Jordan Fields finished 2nd in the 110 meter hurdles. The 4x100 meter relay team of Rayvon Tyler, Josh Gardner, Carmine Jarman, and Jordan Fields finished 2nd. On the women's side, Elena Meadows finished 3rd in the long jump. Meadow also finished 3rd in the 200 meter dash behind Kara Young, who finished 2nd. Young also finished third in the 100 meter dash. Hunter Perry finished fourth in the discus and hammer throw. The men's golf team earned a third place finish at the GLIAC Championships over the weekend. Northwood's third place finish is the highest for the Timberwolves since the 2002-2003 season when Northwood claimed the GLIAC title. The three-day 54-hole event was held at the Virtues Golf Club. Northwood shot team scores of 304, 306, and 299 to finish at 909 overall. The Timberwolves placed three players in the top 20 of the 74-player field. Corey Roberts tied for 7th overall at 224 thanks to shooting rounds of 76, 74, 74. Paul Otsby carded rounds of 75, 76, 74 to tie for 10th at 225. Matt Benson was 20th overall at 228. Northwood will compete at the NCAA Super Regionals May 2nd through the 4th at Grand Valley State University. Our women's golf team also competed on Sunday but at the Walsh Cavalier Classic where they earned 4th place. The two-day 36-hole event was hosted by Walsh at the Glenmore Country Club. The course played as a 6,061-yard par 72. Northwood shot rounds of 314 and 320 to finish at 634 overall. The Timberwolves were led by senior Marlies Kleckner Alt, who earned her third top 10 finish of the season by tying for fifth overall. She shot rounds of 77 and 76 to finish at 153 overall. Grace Cameron tied for 11th at 156, while Danielle Little shot 78-81 to finish 17th. A total of 86 players competed at the event. From all intellect, let the rhythm affect. To lose the inhibition, follow your intuition. Free your inner soul and break away from tradition. Cause when we be out, girl is full of need out. You wouldn't believe how we wow. The softball team went 4 for 6 over the weekend starting on Thursday. 
On Thursday afternoon, the softball team dropped Game 1 10-1 to before losing 11-0 to in Game 2. Both contests were cut short in just five innings to Wayne State. In Game 1, Northwood plated its only run of the game in the bottom of the third with an Andrea Giedel RBI up the middle. Game two wasn't much different as Wayne State scored two in the first, four in the second, and five in the fourth for an 11-0 win. The Timberwolves registered just two hits and registered three errors in the loss. On Saturday afternoon, Northwood won a close 3-2 game one over Malone before downing the Pioneers 10-2 in five innings of game two. Northwood was trailing 1-0 going into the second and bases were loaded. Northwood got on the board on an Ashley Lynn RBI to tie the game, 1-1. Northwood then plated runs in the 5th and 6th for a 3-1 to lead going into the 7th. Vanessa Ewing picked up the complete game win with 6 strikeouts and just a single earned run against 33 batters. Andrea Giedel finished 2-4 for four with an RBI, while Lauren Look and Brooke Waters each went 2-3. for three. In Game 2, Northwood plated 3 in the 2nd, highlighted by Haley Diavilar with a triple and Lynn with a double. After Malone got on board in the bottom of the inning, the Timberwolves responded with four more runs in the third. With two outs, Diavilar got to second on a shot off the fence in left center before Look walked to put a pair of runners on base. Riley Astapovich stepped up to the plate to hit her first home run of the season, and the fourth Lynn's double was followed by Guido's double to score Lynn and take on an 8-1 to lead. The Timberwolves held Malone scoreless throughout the bottom of the inning for a 10-2 five-inning win. Lynn finished 3-for-3 three three with two doubles and four RBIs. Diavilar went 2-for-2 two two with a triple and a double to go along with an RBI, while Ostapovich hit a home run and registered four RBIs. Casey Brown earns the win in the circle with four strikeouts and three innings pitched. Brown is now 5-for-1 on the year. To wrap up the weekend, on Sunday afternoon, the softball team swept Walsh 1-0 and 8-2. Game 1 saw a lot of defensive action, keeping the game scoreless through 7 innings. In the bottom of the 8th, with 2 runners on, Riley Estepovich hit a drooper onto short right field. Ashley Lynn scored from 2nd for a walk-off RBI for Ostapovich to win 1-0. Ostapovich and Lynn each registered a pair of hits in the win. Vanessa Ewing is now 5 for 8 after pitching all 8 innings for the Timberwolves. In Game 2, Northwood plated four runs in the fourth inning, highlighted by an Ostapovich triple with bases loaded. In the fourth, with one runner on, Lauren Look hit her second home run of the year just inside the left field foul pole to take a 7-0 lead. Sophomore Danielle Bartoje pinch hit in the sixth and hit her first career home run to put Northwood on top 8-2 for the win. Bartatoje and Look each finished with a home run while Ostapovich added a triple. Lynn went 2 for 4 with an RBI and a run scored while Jessica Tostrid also crossed the plate twice. Casey Brown is now 6 for 1 in the circle, striking out 5 batters. Our baseball team was just as busy as our softball team was in this past week, and they now stand 16 and 16 overall and 6 and 8 in the GLIAC. On Wednesday, our men's baseball team fell to Grand Valley State University. Grand Valley State took game one 3 to 0 before claiming a 9 7 victory in game two. In Game 1, Grand Valley State University got on the board with a run in the second. The Lakers then rounded out the scoring with a pair of runs in the fourth inning in the seven-inning contest. Northwood reached base just twice in the game, both times by Dustin Lee. He had a hit and a walk to lead Northwood. Game 2 was much more high scoring right from the start. Northwood got on the board with a run in the top of the first, only to see Grand Valley State respond with one in the first and two in the second. The Timberwolves played at a pair in the top of the third to tie the score 3-3. Three three. Grand Valley State again came right back scoring four in the third and two more in the fourth to open up the lead 9-3. It appeared the game was going to continue to feature a lot of runs after Northwood scored four runs of their own in the top of the fifth to cut the lead down to 9-7. To but those four runs proved to be the last of the nine inning game. The Timberwolves had three extra base hits to two for Grand Valley State University. Both teams drew a pair of walks in the contest. Nick Barrientos had a home run, two RBIs, and two runs scored to lead Northwood in the game. Daniel Pulver had two hits, including a triple, to go with two RBIs, while Connor Foley had two hits with a double and two runs scored. 
that on Saturday the men's baseball team split a pair of games against Ohio Dominican. Ohio Dominican University earned a 13-3 win in Game 1 before Northwood earned a dramatic 6-5 win in Game 2. A pair of runs by the Timberwolves in the fourth inning cut the Panther lead down to 6-3 heading to the fifth. But the Panthers scored one in the fifth, five in the sixth, and two in the seventh to close out the win. Connor Foley had a hit and two RBIs to go along with a stolen base. Richie O'Neill had a solo home run to go along with two runs scored. Ohio Dominican got the early lead in game two with a pair of runs in the top of the first inning. Northwood responded with a pair in the fourth to tie the score. Both teams scored one run in the middle innings to send the game to the eighth, tied three to three. The Panthers then got a two out, two run single in the eighth to go up 5-3 heading to the ninth. Northwood was down to their final batter in the ninth inning as the team had the bases loaded in two outs. O'Neill came up big for the Timberwolves, slicing a line drive down the right field line that plated all three runners and gave Northwood a dramatic comeback win. Northwood ended up with a 7-6 edge in hits. O'Neill ended up with three RBIs and a run scored in the game. Connor Foley went 2 for 5 with two RBIs and a run scored, while Ian Dimitri tossed a scoreless ninth inning to pick up his first win of the season. Then on Sunday, the baseball team wrapped up their week playing Ohio Dominican once again. ODU picked up a 7-2 win in Game 1 before the Timberwolves responded with an 8-4 victory in Game 2. In Game 1, Northwood scored its only two runs in the game on a two-run homer by freshman Nick Palmer. After being held to three hits in the entire first game, the Timberwolves' bats came out swinging in Game 2. Northwood put together six hits in the opening frame of the contest, which allowed them to score four runs. The Timberwolves made it 5-0 to zero with a run in the second, which is where the score stayed until the sixth inning. The Panthers played at a pair in the top of the inning, but Northwood responded with three of their own. Northwood out-hit ODU 12-8 for the game. The Timberwolves drew six walks compared to four for the Panthers. Both teams ended up with two extra base hits. Daniel Pulver had two hits, two runs scored, and three RBIs to lead the Northwood offense. Palmer added two hits, a run scored, and an RBI. Kyle Vadrode picked up his second win of the season by allowing two runs on five hits and six innings of work, striking out three. Larry Wood and Sean Larner retired the final five batters of the game without allowing a run. Northwood scored its only two runs of the game on a two-run homer by freshman Nick Palmer. The football team completed a successful spring season wrapping up with their annual spring ball game on Saturday. Now let's check out this week's Athletes of the Week. Our Athletes of the Week this week come from the softball team and the men's track team. On the women's side, our Athlete of the Week goes to Raleigh Astapovich, and on the men's side, Paul Evans. Congratulations to both of you. Upcoming events for next week consist of... On Friday, softball will be home at 3.30 taking on the Tiffin Dragons. Other home events this weekend consist of our baseball team taking on Wayne State at 1 p.m. on Saturday and our softball team at 1 p.m. on Saturday as well. Then on Sunday, we have double headers for both baseball and softball starting at noon. Our track and field team will be on the road for the Al Owens invite on Friday and on Saturday. Our women's golf team will be competing in the GLIAC Championship on the road as well. Then on Saturday, our men's tennis team will be traveling to Lake Superior State with a match time beginning at 10 a.m. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Timberwolves Weekly. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jessica. Remember to keep fighting and go mad.